Since new owner Steve Cohen has taken over the Mets, the man hasn't been shy about flashing the cash and opening up his checkbook. But the Mets could land one of the league's biggest stars, Shohei Otani. Now, joining us to discuss is New York Post baseball columnist John Heyman. John, I mean, I'm just going to go straight into it. Could the Mets really get Shohei Otani? And what are the biggest roadblocks in the getting him in the Queens? Well, they certainly could. Uh, Steve Cohn obviously wants to win very, very badly, has the resolve, certainly has the cash to do it, the wherewithal. There's no question about that. He's already got the payroll up to $380 million or so, by far a record. I would say there are a couple roadblocks here. One is the belief, and we're not sure exactly how much credibility there is to this, but the belief that Otani would prefer to be on the West Coast. We're just kind of reading tea leaves here. Five of his seven finalists, the first go-around five years ago, were West Coast teams. Mm. The other two were the Cubs and the Rangers. So no East Coast teams on it. My understanding is he did tell one high-ranking executive with the team that he did not want to be in New York. That was five years ago. Taste change. He's been around the league for five years. Maybe he's grown to love New York. Or maybe, you know, in this instance, it's more going to be about the money than anything else. It wasn't the first time, and I give him credit for that. He could have delayed his uh, stay over here and come later as a free agent and made money earlier, but uh, came when he wanted to show that he can be a hitter and a, and a pitcher too, and he's done both spectacularly well. The other roadblock is, you know, potential roadblock, uh, the Steve Cohn tax, the fourth year tax, uh, four tier tax um, goes from 90% to 110% next year. So if the Mets are able to do a deal for Shohei Otani and it pays him 50 million a year, and that's not out of the question. Look, they're paying uh, 43 million a year to uh, Verlander and 43 million a year to Scherzer, and we're talking about a player who has marketing capability as well, and is a hitter and a pitcher. So let's just say conservatively, fifty million with a hundred ten percent tax, that becomes a one hundred and five million dollars a year. That's a lot of money, even for Steve Cohen. Yeah, I wasn't good at math when I was a kid, but when you say one hundred and five million, I I go back to school for that. So let's talk about that money. What other teams could be in the running for him, uh, or AKA who could afford that one hundred ten mil a year? Well, let's just say uh, that the Mets will be the lone team in that as a third third time payor, third time let's say violator. But I, I wouldn't consider that violating. I they're over the luxury threshold and. Uh, you know, I give them credit for that because they're spending to win, but there is a penalty involved in that. So the other teams won't have quite as high a tax as the Mets are not nearly as high. So they they would be it would be costing them less money than that hundred and five million. But the Dodgers certainly will be in it. Uh, they love Otani. They chopped 70 million off the payroll, which is very convenient. And so uh, they will be a player for Otani. Uh, the Padres, got to consider them a threat with anybody at this point who thought they'd have five superstars on their team. Incredible job by them. The Giants, obviously, we know they tried for Judge. They tried for Correa. They've got the money. Uh, they've had a good business uh, sense, and uh, they have the willingness to do it. They tried last time. So, And, and the Angels, we're not going to count them out. Uh, they'll certainly want him back. Um, so I think... The biggest threats are going to be those West Coast teams, but you can see Texas going there. You can see the Cubs, which two of the finalists for Otani the last time. So going to be the West Coast, Texas, the Cubs, and we'll see about the Mets. Uh, but those would be the uh, early, and we're talking a very early morning line favorites. Well, we're going to be following you with updates throughout the, the course of the season for uh, Otani, Otani signings. But let's talk about the Mets signings now. Uh, it's official. They've signed Jeff McNeil to a four-year, $50 million deal. Can you grade that deal for us? <laughs> it's hard to grade any deal with the Mets. I mean, we love the fact that they've kept McNeil at uh, $50 million. I think it's a fair deal for both sides. The one question, again, with the Mets, that 110% tax they're going to start paying next year. You know, he's got a $15.75 million salary the last two years of that deal. And the tax at 110 million uh, puts that at about 33, 34 million dollars a year for Jeff McNeil. 
Uh, some people will look at that as a lot of money to spend for a single hitter, a great single hitter, but a single hitter, versatile player, very good player, beloved in New York. He's done a great job. He deserves it. Just the question again, is he worth it with that tax? Uh, the Mets really have no choice, though. They are the, over that threshold by quite a bit. And there's no end in sight in terms of coming under that threshold. John Heyman, we thank you for that. That's not a Zoom background, ladies and gentlemen. He's you, You're somewhere sunny. I'm, I'm really jealous right <laughs> Sorry. now. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you.